Hi, my name is EJ Massa. When I was in college, I'd have orange-flavored chicken every Wednesday. I'd order it from Dragon Dynasty in Worcester, Massachusetts. It was bready, crispy, sweet, with a little heat. I'd get it with white rice and no vegetables. I was in college, and by law, I could only consume trash and alcohol. Maybe I still consume trash and alcohol. Wednesday night was when new episodes of Lost were on, so I'd bring back that styrofoam container, and I'd keep it on the coffee table. I'd keep it closed so it would keep warm, and I'd do that until the television proclaimed, Previously on Lost. Then I'd break in to that container, and then island mysteries would circle around me while I consumed that citrusy chicken bounty. What was the smoke monster? Would they get off the island? What did Jack's tattoos mean? Finding out the answer to that specific mystery was the most unsatisfying, and I regret ever asking the question in the first place. But what remained were memories, mostly of orange-flavored chicken. And of course, I'd go to malls and get Panda Express, and that was good too. But malls are closing down. Or they're filled with COVID. Or they close down because of COVID. A Google of my area reveals that there isn't a Panda Express near me. An orange-flavored chicken served by my local Chinese restaurants leaves a lot to be desired. I'm looking for John Locke caliber of orange-flavored chicken. And all I have around here is Nikki and Paolo tier orange flavored chicken. So I'll just do it myself. I have a recipe for orange flavored chicken from Jimmy Wang from Panda Express. I started out with just over two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I cut the thighs into bite-sized cubes, making sure to slice off any fat or hard gristle still attached to it. And in the end, I have a pile of chicken cubes, ready to be covered in batter for frying. For that batter, I added a cup and a half of all-purpose flour, a half cup of cornstarch, a teaspoon of ground white pepper, and two tablespoons of salt. Whisked that all together, cracked an egg in there, added a cup and a half of water, two tablespoons of oil, and then whisk that together until it was all incorporated and the consistency resembled sort of pancake batter. I should put that into this weird vertical waffle maker Airjo sent me and see what happens. Until then, I added the chicken cubes to that batter, mixed it until the chicken cubes were completely covered in the batter, covered the bowl in some cling wrap, and put that in the fridge to chill for at least 30 minutes. I left mine in for an hour. Gonna put that King Cooker Walk Drunken Monk sent me to good use by adding two quarts of peanut oil. You can use vegetable oil if you want, but I'm more of a fan of peanut oil. I like using woks for frying, seems easier for deep frying than the straight sided pots. I remembered that the King Cooker came with this thermometer, so I decided to try it out. However, the thermometer ended up being too slow and inaccurate to be actually useful. I ended up ditching it partway through the cook. This will be the last I mention this thermometer. Because I have young children running around trying to knock over my tripod, I cooked outside on my Camp Chef outdoor burner. Well, you might be asking, why aren't you using the burner that came with the King Cooker Wok? Well, this one isn't awkwardly short, and it has a built-in side table. I turned on the propane and used a lighter to start the burner. I used a quick read thermometer to check to see when the oil's temperature comes up to around 325 to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I like to stir around the oil with a thermometer too. Not sure if it helps, but I like to do it. Once it's up to temperature, I added the battered covered chicken pieces, trying not to crowd the pieces together. I don't want a giant chicken nugget. Actually, I do want a giant chicken nugget, but no, I'm not worthy yet. Using a spider skimmer, I made sure to break apart any clumps of chicken and flip them around so they brown evenly. And after about six minutes, the color looked perfect. And the nuggets will continue to brown slightly after you remove them. After I removed from the oil, I put the nugs onto a sheet pan lined with paper towels. I actually did the chicken in two batches, so I fried half the chicken, strained it onto the sheet pan, then fried the second half. Mostly to avoid crowding, and to avoid making the forbidden giant nug with which I am too riddled with horrific sins and deceit to ever consider crafting such a holy object. And there we have it, a bunch of crispy chunks of chicken ready to drink some sauce. In my spare wok, I put a tablespoon of peanut oil, 
along with a couple minced cloves of garlic, one fourth teaspoon of pepper flakes, a half teaspoon of minced ginger, and maintained medium high heat. Saute that for a little bit, then add one fourth cup of white sugar and one fourth cup of brown sugar. Just stir it around to break it up. Then I add one fourth cup of orange juice, stir that around to mix and dissolve the sugar, reduce it a little, then add two tablespoons of soy sauce and one fourth cup of white vinegar. These are added later so the vinegar doesn't cook off too much. We'll reduce that a little and then I'll add this slurry that's two tablespoons of cornstarch and two tablespoons of water and I'll add that a little bit at a time until the consistency is like a light syrup. Then I'll add half my crispy chicken. If you want the syrup to cover the whole two pounds of chicken, double the sauce recipe. I kept some unseasoned for my boys because they can just have some plain chicken nuggets. Stirred the chicken in the wok until it was completely coated in the sauce. Getting into every nook and cranny. Then finish it off with one teaspoon of toasted sesame oil. Gave it a final stir and we are ready to plate. Scoop on some white rice, some steamed broccoli, and then plated some fragrant, crispy orange chicken nuggets. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to sit down and figure out what's inside the hatch. I know what's going down my hatch. It's this chicken. Oh, this is way better than any orange flavored chicken that I had. It has a lot going on with it. You got a little bit of the spice from the pepper flakes. It kicks right, it kicks in like toward the end. You get the sweetness, syrupy sweetness up front from the orange. It's very well rounded, the acidity from the vinegar. And it's fresh, crispy. You're not gonna get this at any Panda Express. It wasn't that hard either. And after that oil cools, I poured it through a strainer. You can reuse cooking oil several times, and since this was fresh oil before this cook, I'll save it for a future cook. Oh no, I'm slipping through time. I'm getting a, a, a time travel nosebleed. I think I need to think about my constant. I need to focus on my constant. Yes, it's ribs. I'll make a phone call from the freighter and the call will be to ribs who will be in an elaborately decorated Christmas room. And I'll tell ribs that I love them. And ribs will say they love me. And that will be the best moment in EJ cooks and all of YouTube television. Okay, I'll deep fry ribs too. And in the spirit of Asian inspired cuisine, I'll make a spicy sweet honey sriracha sauce that will go with it. Like my previous video, I will be sous videing St. Louis ribs. So I remove the membranes, cut them in half, and then season them simply with just my all purpose rub. Vacuum sealed them and put them in a water bath at 165 degrees Fahrenheit for 12 hours. When the time was up, I took them out of the water, let them cool off in a bowl of ice water while I was preparing the oil for frying. I used the oil I saved for my previous cook and this time I'll fry them in a Dutch oven on my stove. The kids are asleep now. I'm deep frying ribs at midnight. Nobody can tell me to stop. <laughs> Nobody. I remove the ribs from the bag and cut them into their individual ribs. For the crust, I'm going super simple. Basically the back of the panko tube recipe. Dip them in three stations, all purpose flour, an egg wash, and then finish it in the panko breadcrumbs. If I was depending more on the crust to carry these ribs, I'd season the breadcrumbs a bit with salt, pepper, and paprika. But I want the sauce to do most of the heavy lifting here. And now I have these really weird Twinkie looking ribs. Hmm, maybe I should deep fry a Twinkie. The sauce is super simple. I'll combine 1 4 cup of ketchup, 1 4 cup of sriracha, and 1 3rd cup of honey one tablespoon of rice wine vinegar, one teaspoon of garlic powder. I whisk that over low heat for a couple of minutes to help those flavors come together and that's it. Now the oil has reached around 325 to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and I dropped in my encrusted ribs. Made sure they had plenty of room around them and I let them fry for a couple of minutes before flipping them so they brown evenly. And then after about four minutes, the color on them looked perfect. So I removed them and put them on a paper towel lined sheet pan. Here we go, deep fried crispy ribs. You can either dip them in the sauce like a, a fat mozzarella stick or you could toss them in the sauce like the orange flavored chicken we did earlier. Time for a taste test. I'm gonna take a bite of the un Saucy end. The crust is so crispy. 
If I didn't have a sauce, I'd probably season the, the breadcrumbs more, but I was just trying to see how it would be unseasoned. But the meat is good, it's tender, it's juicy. Perfect. A little bit of heat, a little bit of tanginess from the rice vinegar. And the sweetness really tones down the sriracha. This is awesome. This is like beyond awesome. I gotta tell you, those ribs were a top 10 thing that I've made. Highly recommend you try something like that, especially with the sauce. Well, guys, now that I have piles of fried, vaguely Asian-flavored foods, it's time to sit down and watch Ben Linus commit genocide against hippies. What a gas! You see, it's a joke because he helps murder all the hippies with gas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Until next time, bye!